Hello there, YouTube. We're back with Disco Elysium, our Let's Play. I'm very excited to be back with Kim and the crew. Kim and Carl. I don't like to... Like, I know this is a Let's Play with multiple episodes in at this point, but, you know, spoilers. But, yeah, we're, we're going back to our adventure. I've, I've pressed play on the game. It's taking a hot minute to open for some reason. But uh, I'm very excited to be back. I've, I've continued to ruminate on the game. I've continued to express that I think it, it is definitely one of the best games um, that I've that I've experienced, and and definitely one of the best written games. Uh, I would I would say that. Really taking its time. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, very excited to be to be getting back to it. Um, yeah, we got picked it off. So, yeah, um, as you can probably hear, I don't feel too great. I I kind of do this thing where my body like makes me feel a bit sick when I'm like a little bit too exhausted and a little bit too fatigued. Um, so we'll we'll battle battle through that, but it should be worth it. Uh, I enjoy the game. I want to share the game with yourselves. I want to do the let's play very important to me um i have been playing a few other games though outside play playing a bit of octopath traveler which was pretty good um right let's just click continue and i'll try and remember what the heck i was doing because i truly can't remember okay we're in the church yes right okay i remember exactly what we we're up to what's my volume level right What is it? I didn't break anything, did I? The uh, the woman is still hunched over the keyboard, gently illuminated by the purring machine. Hey, are you the lead programmer of We're All Unearthed by any chance? Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? Nothing, I'll let you do your work. No, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. It does not look like a big loss to her. Yes. Or no. Not anymore. That project is dead. Sad times. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. Orbis. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. She turns back to the terminal. The character never moved. Also, her hands look way above the actual keyboard. Did she say over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. Have you seen the man living in the rafters? Why are there so many machines in this place? What are you doing in an abandoned church? How do you feel about Audic dance music? Nope. But you know he's around. Yes. He's seen you. And? Okay, it's probably not a big no. deal then. You're right. I'm not. Why are there so many machines? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Why do you need an antenna pointer? I use the AR1 as my rain prefect processing unit. Wait, what? Rain prefect. My radio computer. And the antenna is the processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? I don't really know about anything in this world. I know a little. Not really. I know a little. All right. Well, all radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. And the AR1 is a good antenna? I guess it is. So far, I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage, and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. Milieus. She liked telling me this. It calmed her nerves. 
What are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. Working on what? Could you, could you just shh for a moment? <laughs> or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. It's not just rudeness. It really is hard to concentrate on whatever she needs to do. And you're not helping. What about those bowls of water over there? They are connected to my rain prefect. <laughs> whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Great. Okay. What are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? <laughs> I'm a police officer. It's in my it's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. What I'm research? looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. What? Wait. What? See, I know logic. She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. A hole in the world? What do you mean by that exactly? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. Mm. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation waiting for you to answer. That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. Oh. Why did I fail at logic? I think I should have pretty good logic. Ah, uh, off that one. I hate to see it. I can't understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist. Let me, let alone measure it. I don't know. I'm not here for some science. I just want to solve a matter and go home. Hold on a moment. Does it mean we're now living in a world that has holes in it? You measure it by its surroundings. By that which does exist. Which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. Ha! Huh. Hydro transducers. So that's what those water basins are. Devices for recording sound through water. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Hmm. She grows silent staring at the circle of basins that will click some ancient ritual. Do you have any idea where the hole might be located? You said that the research isn't going well, why not? Because it's just trial and error. Trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Do you have an idea where the hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the black, the pitch black heights above, but without much Strange sense. things may flourish in the dark. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church, a place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow, and the higher you go, the less you record. The pillar of silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the crab man lives. I know. <laughs> you don't think the crab man might somehow be responsible might be somehow responsible? No, I don't. She sounds mildly annoyed by this line of questioning. Her hands type in hundreds of commands into the machine. That's all I want to know about the scary two millimeter hole in the well for now. Great. Thanks. How do you feel about dance music? What? I yeah. hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Have you ever listened to it? Like, actually listened? What are you, 40? It's the future of dance music. Same here, it just doesn't connect. Yeah, tap on your heart. Not like disco does anyway. Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right. But how do you feel about a club for a Nordic dance music? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. What do they want to build, then? Take a guess, why don't you? A youth centre would be nice. A petting zoo, a place for animals. Maybe some community space to help the elderly. I'm still convinced they want to establish a nightclub for Nordic dance music. They said it's their dream. 
I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up and coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious and com Okay. I forget exactly what we've done. Um was there anything else I needed to get? I'll take some money. Can we? Hello? No? Okay. All right. Ah. I always press the pause. Okay, so actually I have two skill points. It's pretty neat. Myself of all the crap I've got. Wasteland of reality. Um, yeah, go on, let's unlock a new thought and internalize. 20 hours, wow. That's gotta be good if it's 20 hours in it. Let's, let's do that. Hello, there we go. <laughs> Police work is tough. Na da 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 da. Hello. Wait. Turn around. There's someone's home away from home, just like yours. This is someone's home. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? About the church, I checked it out. You mentioned some kind of electrolysis. What? There on the church. I want to ask you a question about this tent full of equipment. And? What I happened? Talk to the shadow clad being climbing the beams and man living in the ceiling. Oh man, the crab man you mean? Who is he? What did you think? Seemed okay to be, uh, to be honest, very spiritual. Gave me this odd lecture on alcoholism before rambling on and uh, about a mother's love. You were right, he's a true something or other. And the way he climbed, it was terrifying. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Just preaching and praying from the looks of it. He clearly enjoys the physical activity guy climbs like a beast. There's something sinister going on under the building's roof. I think that he's getting high or something. No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah, Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? He keeps himself physically active, thinks spiritual thoughts and doesn't drink. Who am I to evict such a person? As far as I can tell, he's not going to leave. He'll climb around up there. And you guys, and guys, you guys, you'll never catch him. Actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice friendly hyper time? Don't worry, don't worry, I don't think he really gives a damn about you or anyone else. I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Yeah! Maybe, uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in grandma's clothes. Did you see her? I was using the mainframe when Sona, the former lead programmer of Fortress Architect, appeared. A 
programmer. That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She said you guys haven't been completely honest with me about your plans. She did not like the uh, dance club idea. What a pity. That's my favourite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! She made it very clear that she won't that she won't leave until her own project. And you is can't finished. just evict her. No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. I could go for another try, bring down the hammer of the wall. No, Look I can't. Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist. Coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's odd. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? She absolutely does not really true does not really true lose by it. She gets down, I mean who doesn't just listen to that crazy pulse? Wonderful! If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? I refuse to throw her out, but I can contra I can try convincing her. Excellent! Good luck, my friend. Goodbye, officer. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to chuck her out. But if she finishes her project and leaves, then who might stop them having a nice little nightclub? Yes. What is it? Hey, about the two millimeter hole again. What if I just force you to leave? I'm a police officer. What would you have to say? What if you didn't have to leave? I told her to Andre he wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. You don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. It's not the anodic dance music that's made her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accident. You bitter because your radio game project failed? That's right. If we couldn't get our Welkins to happen, I don't want anything to happen, ever again. There's not a trace of irony in her voice. She means it. Convince her to cooperate. I mean, very high. Watch me, watch me fail this. Watch me fail it. Easy. Okay. When her research is done, she can move out. Listen, about your research, you mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Maybe I can help with something. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in a church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's offside copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Uh, what is an off-site copy, and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She points to the glowing cube. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? <laughs> if it's called off-site, why is it still on-site? Oh, God, not this again. <laughs> <sighs> it is not on-site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on-site. And no. Taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? She stares at you with pleading fury. This is eyes. clearly a painful topic for her. She must have had to explain herself numerous times. You mean the fortress accident in the 
the Doom commercial yeah, area. That's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Actually, I've already been inside. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. And where exactly is the offsite coffee? In the giant ice... But you've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... I found a note in the fridge that said the offsite coffee had been moved to a safer place. Um... Wait. A note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? It said the off-site copy had been taken to a nearby ice cream maker. The note was signed by someone named Suslaw. Zerisa. Of Z course. Z yeah. Our project lead, Suliswov Zerisa. Suliswov. God, he was always so hell-bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. And feature creep and the valley of the head. Like it would have made a difference. The off-site copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. She crosses her arms defiantly. And the heads. I won't even get into the heads. Millions of them. Go find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Thanks. Valley of a thousand heads. You like the sound of that. I, I found the ice cream maker, but I can't get it open. It's completely frozen. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Or, I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. This solution. But she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing. Something she holds dear. Why can't you get the film at yourself? The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. Why did you think you're part of the curse? Because she's from Martinez. And people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. Um, that's a bit biased, don't you think? Yeah, people in Martinez definitely like to get with the times. Don't be too harsh, it's only because of their socio-economic situation. What if it does emit elemental evil? Not on your eyes. She literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my rain city. I'm not making this up. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. <laughs> Once I came in one morning, only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets. Wards. It looked like some seminine magic. Alright, I'll go and, for the offside copy. And here's my Falsund multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the Falsund. Let's freaking go. To say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Kvalsund. Let's freaking go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We can open anything now. Apparently you can fast travel, but I don't know how it works. So we're we're gonna take it slowly. Also, no truth. I don't think it's it's not actually that far. Magnesium. I honestly didn't think I spoke to these people before. The woman next to the bucket of clothes hums an old melody, her eyes are closed. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be Sav Samaran, possibly Sigean, also known as the Apricot Suzrinti. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. If you can't see, then how did you know I was here? Lean forward. Uh, what if I don't want to? I'll lean forward. Oh. Welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. That's fine. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Trouble? Say the second thing, Bratan. Shows you got style. We're cops. We're hell raisers. Click, click, bang, bang. What he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of trouble. Oh, 
Of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. I am an ill omen. <laughs> what kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black Hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. If I'm a, if I am considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me that? Maybe they are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. <laughs> as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Yeah, I'll say goodbye for now. Um, I want to tick off a few things as I go. Let's get me back across. Footprints in the snow. How did I miss all this as I walked in? This is it. The scene of the party. The fire pit. Cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it. You don't mean, don't you mean scene of the crime? Not as such. I'm talking about what came after the party scene. Yeah, sure, those like, look like a lot of folks Looks like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Hey Kim, looks like we've had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. Looks like they have had a great time laughing here. This is the kind of theatre to them circus production by a great clown. What was this party against? The, was this party against the law on the ice like this? It was probably a public danger. Hey, let's keep moving, detective. Somehow, he doesn't want to dwell on it. banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. It must be cold and lonely down there, in the icy water. A carriage in the sea? Where did it come from? My guess is it started its journey from the plaza, where it biked through the fence. Let's investigate, Kim. I agree. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden sinking feeling stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep dark cold water why the doom and gloom it's just a sunken motor carriage some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea what is the make of this the logo is too deep in the murky water you can't make it out but you do see a monkfish float by uh, well, the motor I... carriage is properly stuck in the ice Getting it out would require a team of specialists. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. The estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Your mocking tone finds no response but the motion of the waves. Mm. Yeah, another case of that Enigma displacement triumphing over the driver's IQ. Yes, yes. Clearly, <laughs> this is a trial. I'd say the vehicle has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. What should we do? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket. A, a joyrider, joyrider jacket. jacket. A joyrider jacket. You feel a strange connection to this joyrider. Maybe he's from some kind of joyrider's district and likes blue and white racing livery, like a cop would. How long would it take for the Lord's eye to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops? 
Sit on the swing and wait for the tire to recede. Okay. That's fine. We have, we have As a you sit down in the stuff. old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. Whistle a tune. Let's go for it. The tune on nice. your lips forms a strange yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Two birds on a wire, whistling by <laughs> the seaside, looking at the water and the sunken car. The clouds pass in the sky, and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. Tatcher is taking a sweet time. Would you rather sit on an anvil for an hour or stand on the river of Legion? I believe it's following a pattern set millions of years ago by cosmic forces. But I suppose it could move quicker, yes? Clouds on the horizon grow darker and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. If you have to side with either the strikers or the ship or company, who would you choose? Do you think I'll ever find my gun? Man, this is taking a long time. Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> but if someone puts a gun to your head? Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. Thirty more minutes pass. Do you make out the marquee now? Squint your eyes and say, is that the number is that a number on the side? Yes, forty one. What do you think it stands for? Uh oh. It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Does he know something about the driver of this vehicle? Forty one is it's is his rank in the underground street racing hierarchy. Rub your chin, small fish this one. Forty one heard this street racer is quite the ladies, man. This must be Tommy Forty One, the morning host of FM forty one. Looks like the factory made a mistake and accidentally called this one Copus 41, Scarf Stupid Factory. I hate guessing district something, a precinct, something municipal, Ruby Temples, you're giving me a headache. Oh god no. I'm sorry Harry, I'm so sorry. 41, precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach and the most terrible feeling comes over you. Oh no Harry. No, just nope. Say no to this Harry. Uh, noon. Oh God, it's mine. I drove my car into the sea. I'm afraid so. Yes, it looks like you drove your police motor carriage into the sea after you jumped across a canal. Maybe I was in pursuit of someone. How did we? How did we get it out? How do we? I can still fix it. This is not gonna. They're not gonna take me back after this, are they? The badge, the gun, and now this. Things were going so well. We were just whistling me merrily. <laughs> You can still whistle. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. Maybe I was in pursuit of someone? Of whom? I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. How do we get it out? Detective, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. I can still fix it. That is very unlikely. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. People are going to be angry at me, aren't they, in Precinct 41? Let's face it. This is a substantial loss to your district's budget. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. This was 20% of the station's vehicular budget. So, so it's just going to be there like that? They're not going to make me back after that. They're not going to take me back after this, are People they? People are more valuable than machines. Training a police officer is even more costly. The badge, the gun, and now this. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. Yikes. There is also a fourth thing you've lost. 
A four. More precious than the gun, the badge, and the motor carriage combined. Oi. Lost forever into the deepest of uh, seas. Like, at least I can see what's in there now. Yikes. Hate to see it. Yes. Let's go take a look. Oh, uh -huh. oh, hello. Visual calculus. What have I currently got equipped? It is a jacket, right? I can't see what I'm selecting. Hello? I'd like to go to my items. Thank you. Oh, the coops shivers. Right, let's put that on. Eh, slightly less cool. Fuel kind of slow. Oh, it fetched an 11. And my ID card. Um, RCM badge. Dubois. Th a thick blue piece of, a piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name rank on it next to the writing see a, a man stare back at you, a younger version of you, already disintegrating inside but still presentable on the outside. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. I found my badge. At least something good came out of all this. Study the badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Rivershall West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that, but the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. Good choice. A newer photo would look different. Eight maybe 10 years. The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking. Why? What do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Name, Harrier Dubois. Harrier? That's long for Harry. So you are Harry. Everhart was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. What kind of name is Harrier? But I don't want to be Harry Dubois. I don't accept it. And name it's is Harrier. a wartime name. Revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times. Like Undying or Boxer or Iron Hide. A name like Armour. Except it. At least to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. He's not going to call you Harrier. He'll keep calling you Officer when he's angry with you, and Detective when he's not. Eh? The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it. Lieutenant W. Freighter. The Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. Double ye The title of Yefrator is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your double Yefrator. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's décontage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes, they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, Lieutenant. Heavy duty case solving machine. I thought my rank was drunk. Well, it's uh, whatever that way is. Decontage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution. 
which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kings. Kings? Kings like satellite officers and the additionally a freighter rank, I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. So you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior? So you've been putting up with me because we're of the same rank? Thanks for explaining all this, don't mention it. No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you are doing good police work. Oh, thanks, kid. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. And now we've even found your badge. He trusts you, for now. Try not to spoil it. Such so a that's small yet precious serial thing. Number. That's just the serial number. Revachol, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. Nice. The numbers are not there for good measure. Date of issue. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you, of that you are sure. Mm -hmm. I remember that time! That was a good time! We had a good work-drink balance going! What happened, man? Pump it up! Put the badge away. Alright, cool. So I'm your badge. Alright, let's get across and let's let's solve some some business. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Right, let's go in here and give this guy the stuffed bed. Oh, let's tell her we met her husband. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. Um, you didn't notice this about me, but actually I've lost all memory. I ran into your husband in the coast. Goodness, H how is he? Did he say why he hasn't returned yet? Wait, hold on. Oh my, I didn't do the resub alert. Oh my. I'm a failed streamer. Hoffa with the 38 months. I I didn't even realize it was time to do a resub. I was like, it's still May. And obviously, like, I had not realized it was a month. Half a hour's ago. <laughs> I will correct that for next week and uh, give you a proper resub alert worthy of your station. The old woman clasps her hands together over her blanket. He's fine, ma'am. As we had suspected, he couldn't get back earlier because the water lock on the canal was broken. It's all good, man. He's just finishing up some work. This weekend, I'll be, I'll be back. A couple of days rest and I'll be back to it on Monday. Oh, yes. That's my morale. He's bound to catch a cold staying out there for so long. But I am so relieved to hear that he's okay. Thank you for putting an old woman's heart at ease. If even a little. You haven't, however. There are dangers out there. Our aging bodies fail. Her heart won't rest until Morel is safely back with her. Now maybe she'll open up about those fascinating cryptids. Take her mind off all this. Right, let's try this. What should we fail? There's all really right. no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Hey, Lena, I'd like to hear about some of those cryptos you've studied. Could you tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. One cryptid, not a couple. One. This one turned into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. <laughs> okay, Kim, just one cryptid, promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Ooh, tough choice there. 
Oof, what's the biggest cryptids? The tiniest, what's the most dangerous? Are there any invisible cryptids? Let's go for the dangerous. The gnome of Jeroma. The gnome of Jeroma sounds terrifying. Oh, yes. None of its victims survived. Grieving relatives never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. What does this cryptid look like? It was reportedly a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. Nice. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks, confirming the existence of this very little species? Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. Uh, getting towards the end of the school year and busy with end of school year things. There are two dance performances today. Two dance performances. That's, that's a lot in one day. Um, the end of the school year, though, means summer is around the corner. Alas, always alas, and then it was gone. Isn't that overly convenient? No, it was a perfectly good inf inf uh, explanation. Stop being so skeptical. Sure, a perfectly good explanation. It dissolved in its own venom. Go on then. Ask about more gnomes or whatever. This has been educational. Sadly, we need to discuss something else. Conclude. Of course, dear. What's up, gah? Can I help you? I bought my bill for tonight. 20 real. I actually got Then that. why are you wasting my time? God, I found a yours. new bed for the whaling. Give him the ruffled grouse. What is this thing? I knew someone was coming, but I kept eating it. But I kept eating anyway. True that. Um, the man takes the stuff in. It's no big guy. Yeah, I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cock. What? The interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. People just don't know how to accept gifts, <laughs> especially taxidermy. He likes it. He likes the bird. It solves his broken bird problem. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. <laughs> it's not actually about that, but he liked it. Got the 20 real? Yeah. Good. You got the room for the night, but... All right, lovely. Solving quests left, right, and center. Still paying me. We are without adequate human support for Mario, apart from myself. So if he needs to go out, we may well have to take a quick lavatory break. But first, I'm getting into this ice cream maker. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Hmm. I've got the thing to open it. Why would that? Hmm. This should help. Why does it not help? This right, mate, orange machine is dead still. It has a hand. All right, do I have anything that improves my physical instrument? One second, mate, okay? Minus two physical instrument. Chuck on the vest, I guess. 
and I hope that this helps. Uh, I'm also going to save real quick. But Mario will. This orange it machine on, is dead still. It has a hand. Ice squeaks beneath your Kvalzun multi tool, but your fingers slip away from the tool. The lid shut as tightly as before, and it's already unplugged. There's not much else to do other than wait for it to defrost or bulk up and get stronger. Dang it. Well, that sucks. The beer's eyes are dead and empty. Ice inside the fridge. Hmm. That's really annoying. <laughs> I really thought this would help. This has impeded my quest so much. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys. The speaker comes to life. Good afternoon. Let's Please do the, repeat. Is let's try the password for the production. Good. Please repeat the password. Good. I've unlocked the production schedule. After ending the call, Please press print to access the filament. Really? She just used the same password? <laughs> Maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. Fortress accident. Is there anything that's, else that's I all can for do now. for you today? Thank you and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. Casting that's the frame print. with a quiet determination. The printer starts printing. A piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters colors its surface. Read the printout. It's a project report written by the lead producer, oh. Andrew Andy Schott, about Wirral Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. Tear off the printout and throw it away. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident, SCA, managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. Noise. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 RIA, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 wow. RIA, with only half of the game finished. Where did they get all that Let's money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Workforce. Fortress Accident employed 18 people. The bulk of the team, composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts, and a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Corolidum in the basement to escape his obligations. Why did Fortress Accident have so many concept artists? Wait, why did the radio game need so many artists? It didn't. I don't need so... No. No. Definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy though, especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skip to work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. Skin through the production schedule? The production schedule depicts the glorious descent into bankruptcy. Because of the concept artists? Not the concept artists. It wasn't even the writers, with their panic attacks and three-hour lunches. It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large, and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a four million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. I could have bridged the gap. No. You couldn't have. Ah. Uh -oh. Definitely not. Ah. Uh -oh. Not a chance. Even then, success remained within an ever narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. The what? At the eleventh hour, the lead designer, Jim Spawn, Suliswav Jalisa, decided that what we're out untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head 
would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. How many heads were there? So many. The last count, there were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all wow. of which could be endlessly recombined. So that's what did them in? Well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. This must be the anomaly Sona mentioned in the church log. On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness before the Egalnian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel front, just as the World Untethered project was being compiled that day. And the anomaly caused all the data to get lost in the air? When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider, but despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. Uh, the whole game and wouldn't even pay for it? Always read the terms of service. And let's face it, they didn't have any money left for a legal action. Okay, copy. Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. What does it say? S. Lukanen Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me, not after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore. So I started keeping it in the basement, in the ice bear refrigerator, near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. Sound like a perfectly reasonable explanation? That's not what her colleagues thought. Anything else? The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Read notes Four again. months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left, and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under, too. Slipstream switched to making skis, and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right, though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez, all of it. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I can get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachol West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Saint Brune 1147? That's what the street sign next to the church said. Terrible. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys, the Doing filament the slides out of its glowing nest. Leave. Homosexual underground. Maybe you should stop obsessing about your own and other people's sexuality. Feels like it's about time to do that. You thought about this for eight hours? Not only should you stop. You should tell Kim you've stopped obsessing about other people's sexuality, too. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Unless you already got him killed because you were obsessing about your sexuality. There's no way of telling from within your brain. But for your own sake, please say you didn't. So really, I get no bonus. Stopped obsessing. Wow, well, okay. Well, that's pointless. Right, okay, I'm gonna have to take a quick break though, um, as Myra needs the toilet. So I'll be right back. Don't go away. And uh, we'll be back after this. <laughs>